Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another installment of Pioneer with Poncelet with me, Kevin Poncelet. Uh, this deck that we've got for you today is called Orzov Vehicles. We're going to be trying to interact with our opponent in the form of Thought Season Fatal Push and then crew some vehicles with our Thraben Inspectors, our Thalia Heretic Cathars, our Gideons, our Muta Vaults. Um, and we've got Smuggler's Copter and Heart of Kirin as the vehicles of choice here. Definitely the best vehicles ever printed. Um, very, very powerful cards. So here we've got a good opener. We're going to keep it. Um, a lot of interaction and some good value here in Thraben Inspector. And, and Thalia generally tends to mess with your opponent pretty well in the first uh, first five or six turns of the game. If you get her down on turn three, opponent is doing some sort of green elf once upon a time thing, which is very popular in the format as of right now. Um, I'm just going to go with the bolt the bird tactic here and push that elf. We don't know which take of eight elves for once upon a time they're on. It looks like hardened scales though. Oops. I'm going to lead with Thought Seize. Yeah, sure is. Hardened Scales. So they're going to have a Vivian Arc Bow Ranger later, um, which is scarier than Nyssa, just because with any creature like this just gets kind of out of control. They need a creature though, and they actually don't currently have a creature. So I'm gonna take Nyssa, and uh, mostly because it's the thing they can actually do next turn. And if they don't find a creature for Arcbow Ranger, it doesn't do a whole lot. So I suppose we can uh, just hope they don't find anything good to play this turn, and we should be uh, should be in pretty good shape. I found an elf, which doesn't count as good. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, we already knew about that. They played a forest and an elf. So we know all three of their cards. They do have a basic, so Thalia Heretic Cathar isn't quite doing what we want here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is play another Thraben Inspector and push the elf on their turn when they go to like pump it with Vivian. Yeah, I think that's my move here. There's Vivian right on time. They played the forest. I'm gonna go ahead and push this guy right now. Not sure if it would matter to wait, um, but I guess they could float a mana and potentially have like some sort of fight spell or something. It's very unlikely. I mean, I know basically they're 75 because they're probably playing something very similar to the, the Hardened Scales list that did very well um, at the SCG Invitational this past weekend, or I guess two weekends ago, by the time you're seeing this. Um, so, Gideon's pretty great. But doesn't really help us pressure Vivian at the moment. Um, we could just hit Vivian for four and crack a clue. I think I'd rather play Thalia though and hit Vivian for two. This way any new creature they play is going to come in tapped. So as long as they don't draw a walking ballista like right now, we're in pretty good shape. But a walking ballista right now would be a problem. Pretty big problem.
Um, Walking Ballista combos very well with Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that combo, basically the Walking Ballista gets two free counters off the Vivian and can just shoot whatever it wants with those two counters. You're just like plusing your Planeswalker and, and being able to shock whatever you want while also giving your creature a giant growth effect. Pretty strong. Pretty strong combination. Um, nothing like game-breaking or anything, but it's just really solid value. And they found a Walking Ballista off the Once Upon a Time, so that's kind of problematic for us. At least they didn't get the full value off of it with the 2-2 the Ballista. It's at least coming in as a 1-1. One, one. But yeah, they're going to get to put two counters on it and kill our Thalia, probably. Still, that means we're going to be able to kill the Viv, which is a big deal. And if we draw land, we'll also be able to play Gideon, which is obviously also a big deal. Well, not that land. Any other land would have worked here. But yeah, we're just going to come at Vivian with everything. They may just kill our Mutavault if they don't care as much about the Thalia. But I, I assume they're going to kill the Thalia. If not now, then by the end of the turn. Crack this clue. And we'll play a tapped courtyard and pass. Um, so we're in pretty good position. Our opponent has one card in hand. We don't know what it is. Um, and they have the Ballista in play, which they can pump up to a 4-4 next turn. It's obviously pretty good, but um, I think our board is slightly better. I think we're slightly ahead, even though Ballista does stand to take over the game if they find something like a Hardened Scales. They're going to go for the Mutavault. All right. Interesting. Getting a little dark in here. I'm gonna turn a light on. All right, so they chose to just put a counter on Walking Ballista and pass the turn. I'm going to crack the clue before we do anything else. Scrap heap. Yeah, I'm just going to play Gideon. And uh, prompt them to use the walking ballista here. By attempting to give... Um, Thalia indestructible, maybe. Maybe lifelink. Maybe even vigilance. Um, doesn't really matter, huh? Let's go with indestructible. Oh, they just let that happen. All right, cool. That works out for me. Yeah, it was definitely correct to go with indestructible because they allowed the the trigger the the, uh, the activated ability to resolve, which meant then we get to choose. Um, I wasn't quite sure how that resolved, but yeah, it was absolutely 
indestructible there was the call. I was a bit confused and thought maybe they still had a chance to respond once we picked the um, the keyword that we wanted to give. They're going to cast it once upon a time. They have five extra mana here, zero cards in hand. That Walking Ballista is still doing a, a decent job of uh, holding us up. They took a Voracious Hydra, all right. So they can make a 3-4 Voracious Hydra that eats the Thalia right now. They're attacking Gideon with Walking Ballista. So if we block the Walking Ballista with both the Raven Inspectors, they have to pump the Ballista. And we still only lose one Thraven Inspector. I think that sounds pretty good. I mean, they obviously can pump it and then kill the other Thraven Inspector after combat. Um, but I think that's okay, making them use resources here on our Thraven Inspectors rather than our other cards. So this time they're going to respond and kill the Thalia, which I was surprised they didn't do last time. I'm going to play Scrap Heap, and I don't know, that Voracious Hydra actually stands to be a very big issue for us. We do have Black Blade to... Uh, knock it down a peg, but we can't block the ballista. And by knock it down a peg, I mean we can actually just exile it. But um, yeah, I can't attack with Thraven Inspector to force them to fight this. All right, this is an interesting turn here. Interesting game. Uh, it felt like we were really far ahead, but Walking Ballista is a pretty powerful card, and then finding the Voracious Hydra is also pretty bad for us. We do have a pretty good sideboard for this deck in uh, Triple Blight Beetle. Coming in post-board. Uh, we've also got Legion's End, which is pretty good against Ballista and Voracious Hydra, and the Elves, and... Winding Constrictor and just a whole bunch of their creatures. So Legion's End is also going to be coming in. D Spark kills Vivian. I'm not sure that we'll bring in D Spark, but maybe one. I mean, we only got one. So here's Winding Constrictor. All right. Choosing not to go with. Oof. So I kind of have to block here so that we don't lose our Gideon which is bad. Yeah, that Ballista is just really doing it all by itself. That's a pretty good draw. All right, so we can exile the Ballista post-combat here. I 
think that's the move. And then we just have to find some other way to deal with Voracious Hydra at some point. I don't really want to use our Black Blade on exiling their Ballista. But it, it really is that, that good here. If they draw one more land, um, they can give it four counters in one turn, which is just basically unbeatable for us. So I got to exile it. And just let the, let the new threat be Voracious Hydra, which is going to be huge, to be fair. It's going to be absolutely huge. I really don't care that they're killing Scrap Heap. That doesn't matter at all. Um, that guy comes right back for basically free. Um, they're going to deal one damage to me. Okay. I'm going to leave this Urborg in hand as it could be useful for Smuggler's Copter Fodder later on. Now they could just fight the Night Ally, but that makes a much smaller Voracious Hydra, which is good for us. Um, if they go like full on Gigantor uh, Voracious Hydra, we're gonna have to draw a removal spell, but we kind of have to draw a removal spell here anyway. Card's very good. Yeah, it seemed like a janky standard card, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, another Hydra card that like has some upside if you get to like four or five mana. But obviously with cards like Winding Constrictor and Hardened Scales, it becomes kind of a crazy threat for even three mana. And what a powerful mana sink in the late game too, obviously. They're going to go with double. So they're going to have a 13-14. Uh, that's big boy. So yeah, we need to find another fatal push. Um, that's basically all we've got is two more fatal pushes in our deck. So it's unlikely that we're going to win this game. Unfortunately, we can't really play around a 13-14. Um, it's just too big. Can't really attack through it with anything. Even if we hit like Heart of Kieran or something, it just doesn't do enough. Um, I mean, Heart or Copter would have been great since they're at five, but it's just too slow against that giant Hydra. Um, so if we attack with Gideon, we're going to lose our Night Ally and our Scrap Heap. Oh no, we'll, we'll lose our... Scrap heap, they'll take two and just block Gideon with the 13-14. So they'll go to three, and we'll play Toolcraft Exemplar, which means they need to draw something to kill us. Yeah. All right, that's what we're going to do here. So, yeah, plus Gideon, swing out. And yeah, we'll have lethal next turn, actually, if they brick. So this isn't so bad, actually. All right. Because, um, yeah, they're going to make the obvious blocks, I would assume. Oh, they might even go to two. Yeah, that makes even more sense. Um, they go to two. We play toolcraft. So they can attack Gideon with the Voracious Hydra, which obviously kills Gideon. 
But if they brick here, I think I think we're in really good shape. I think we just win. Really interesting game. I was just saying how we're we're pretty cold to the uh, the hydra, but always look at your opponent's life total, and make sure you're doing the right thing in, in accordance with that. And we actually won this game just uh, by remembering that, you know, our opponent's at five. Yeah, they have a 13, 14, but, but they're at five. <laughs> and we just drew another creature that attacks for three. Um, Scrap Heap Scrounger actually was really good there because even if they block Scrap Heap Scrounger, we're still going to get that artifact back on the board to pump our toolcraft during combat. And yeah, we squeaked that one out. That one felt good. Um... Yeah, it's easy to just assume that, oh, my opponent just did a busted thing, and we were, like, sort of doing it, but now our opponent's just way too far ahead, and we can't win. Um, yeah, those those type of thoughts are going to put you into a negative headspace, which is going to just get you, uh, get you more losses than you need to. Obviously, right there, I started to go into that headspace, and... Uh, Turns out we we had it, <laughs> we had the win. Um, I didn't think tool graphic tool craft exemplar was a good draw until we did some more math. Um, so blight beetle is fantastic. This is uh, this is definitely where we want the blight beetle. This deck and the mono green devotion deck are both decks where blight beetle shines. Any green deck blight beetle beetle is okay against, but here it's like just next level um if you're unfamiliar with how this works they they try to cast voracious hydra but you can't put counters on it um they try to cast walking ballista you can't put counters on it it just goes right into the graveyard voracious hydra just hangs out as an o1 so pretty powerful um noxious grasp kills the planeswalkers and also kills windy constrictor so that's pretty great um cast down is probably good enough D Spark kills Vivian, but that's about it. We might not need the D Spark. Um, I kind of like Duress. So I think Toolcraft, as, as much as it won us that game, last game, I think it's pretty weak here. Um, I think our own Walking Ballista might not be necessary. We can pop off some of their plant tokens and their elves, uh, which is powerful, but... I'm not sure about Walkie B. And then uh, yeah, Fatal Push is great. Scrap Heap's pretty great. Um, maybe this is a matchup where we cut down on Thoughtseize. Just because we have so many powerful spells to bring in against it, against them. And we can just answer whatever they're doing. I guess we can trim a Gideon for like a Duress. Because I don't care too much about their creatures. Yeah, I like Thoughtseize better, though. All right, one Thoughtseize. I do care about their creatures a bit. We want to take their Voracious Hydra or what have you. Um, so they're going to be boarding in some amount of ways to interact with Blight Beetle, which is a good reason to maybe leave in some amount of hand disruption. But I just really wasn't sure what we're trying to take out there. I guess, like, Thraven Inspector could have gone. But Thraven Inspector... Just uh, smoothing out our draws and crewing our copters is, is very powerful as well. Um, we're going to keep this hand. It's pretty great. No Blight Beetle, but just a solid hand. And... We're off to the races here. Our opponent starts off with a Mystic. We're going to untap and bolt that bird, I think. Yeah, we have enough removal that bolting the bird feels pretty good here. We do know that they're hardened scales, and we do know that they do have uh, more powerful creatures that we might want to Fatal Push. Um, so they're stuck on one land. In which case, I'm really tempted to just stone rain them, and I think I will. Yeah, I'm just going to stone rain our opponent and then play a Thalia next turn. 
So you have to always play to the context of the board, um, the context of the game. And in this context, our opponent has missed their land drop and played another elf as their mana source. Um, and in those cases, you need to kind of stri- strike while the uh, the striking's good um, and just just get their creatures off the board, get their lands off the board, basically just stone raining your opponent. Um, obviously, non-games of magic are not super interesting, but um, when your opponent keeps a one-lander, sometimes it's just game over, and, and as you can see here, it looks like that's what's going to be happening. Um, and certainly I'll take these types of wins. Um, there are hands out of hardened scales that I assume you keep with one land. Um, it's not always not always a good decision, but I mean, I don't know. We've all, we've all kept the one landers with a couple of elves and just hope to get there, and it doesn't always work out. But definitely pay attention to what your opponent's doing. And, and uh, if they miss a land drop, stone rain that elf. It was especially easy for us to make that decision with the Noxious Grasp still in hand. But yeah, I think I would have made that decision in any case there. Grasp the Thalia, okay. pretty good um we can crew heart now though and we wanted to get the blight beetle into play anyway and they're just gonna scoop to the blight beetle okay yeah i mean our hand was very good in game two here so yeah Kind of uh, stomped on some hardened scales there. Hey, 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 and welcome to round two. We've got a pretty great hand to start with here, so we're going to keep this with our uh, white-black, our Orzhov vehicles deck. Um, we just dispatched a, a hardened scales opponent in round one, and let's see what we're playing against here in round two. Looks like red, green, stompy. Um, but there are other decks that are playing stomping ground. There's Possibility Storm. And uh, just various rug decks that are just like rug good stuff. Teamer good stuff if you're not familiar with the old nomenclature. Um, let's go with Toolcraft Exemplar to start. I'd like to start applying pressure right away. And they didn't have an elf, which is good for us. And if we just go toolcraft into scrap heap, then start thought seizing and fatal pushing, I think we're in a pretty good spot because we probably don't care too much about their little creatures since we have the fatal push. And we do care about things like Glorybringer, um, Chandra, Torture Defiance, that type of card. And that's when we want to get the thought seize going just give them some time to find their good cards that we want to take with the thought seize uh you don't always have to thought seize on turn one yeah it looks like our opponent's on team or something over there so maybe oko this could be a good time to thought seize since they are playing blue and oko would be kind of a big problem here so yeah i am actually going to thought seize now rather than play the scrap heap We're a bit flooded, but five lands is fine. Once we get to six or seven lands, that's when it starts to hurt a bit. They're going to Wild Slash. All right. Yeah, it looks like Rug good stuff. Teamer good stuff. Um, Sinister Sabotage. Sinister Sabotage and Explosion Expansion. Expansion Explosion, that is. Um... So they're like a go big rug deck. Um, might be playing Fires. Might be playing Wilderness Reclamation if they're playing Expansion. This is interesting. I haven't played against this strategy yet, to my knowledge. At least not with like counter spells. Um, 
played quite a bit of Pioneer, so this is kind of cool, something different. Um, I mean, Expansion is definitely the most powerful card. The other two are just counter spells they can't cast. So yeah, let's take the Expansion. It's not that close. I just, just realized that they didn't have double blue and that those counter spells deal, do literally nothing. Um, also good to keep in mind what lands your opponents have in play. It's easy to forget <laughs> that uh, all these lands don't tap for whatever color they want. Um, having played a lot of modern and some legacy and some other uh, non-rotating formats, you can sometimes feel like, oh, whatever, they always have all the mana they need, but that's definitely not the case. Um, and the mana is certainly a bit worse here in Pioneer. Uh, that was a pretty good draw, certainly something we wanted. And yeah, we're just going to play Scrap Heap. And I really doubt that we're going to want to Fatal Push anything on their turn. But just in case, since we have plenty of uh, untapped sources left anyway, we'll, ju we'll just play the Swamp. They drew... Haze of Pollen, whoa. So they're probably a Wilderness Reclamation deck. Interesting. So they're like Teamer Reclamation, which was a standard deck for a while. Fatal Push is absolutely dead, by the way. I'm sure it does not have a target in their entire deck. But luckily our opponent missed on their land drop, let alone finding a blue source. They just didn't hit any land. Um, and again, they haven't. Get a minus four of this Gideon. Even though attacking with it would have been fine too. Um, gonna play this Urborg so we can play around sensor but yeah I just wanted to play the second Gideon so we have uh, lethal with with our creatures that aren't Gideon and then obviously more than lethal with Gideon himself Opponent scoops it up. Unfortunate for them there, they just didn't hit their second blue source, nor did they hit their fourth land. And I assume their deck plays way more lands than ours does. So a bit unfortunate. Um, Thoughtseize was pretty good. We're obviously going to bring in Duress, Collective Brutality, D Spark for Wilderness Reclamation. Um, it's likely that Rest in Peace is good if they're playing Sinister Sabotage. I'm, I'm going to assume they have dig through time in some amount and I'm also going to assume they're playing some reason to have noxious grasp but let's see what we're going to cut first uh, the fatal pushes are coming right out that's an easy one and I suppose the third Gideon I mean Gideon deals seven damage on the second turn it's in play which is pretty powerful even against a deck where they're just trying to fog us a bunch. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if they're if they're actually playing um, Nexus of Fate or if they're just like a value reclamation deck. I mean, they're likely playing Nexus. It's like a team or Nexus. In which case, they're probably playing Tamiyo. I don't know that we want all the Noxious Grasps, but maybe like one. And Valorous Stance could save a creature, but generally not going to be that powerful for two mana. Um, yeah, let's go with one Noxious Grasp just to hedge a little bit. And we'll, we'll trim a Gideon and maybe one Heart as it's a legendary legendary vehicle so we don't really want to have 
want to draw two. It's also unlikely they can kill a Heart of Kirin. I mean, not that unlikely. They're a red deck. They they could certainly have uh, a braid. But uh, this hand's very good. Let's keep that. We've got Thoughtseize and Duress. Very important. We only have one source of colored mana, which is a problem um, if we want to actually deploy these uh, Thraven Inspectors as well. But... So, on turn two, I'd like to definitely start casting Thought Season Duress. Don't really need to on turn one here. Um, so, I'm going to just get a Thraven Inspector in play. It doesn't bring any sort of serious beatdowns or anything, but it, uh, I think, makes more sense on turn one than trying to Duress some four drop that they can't cast yet. Yeah, I'd like to let them set up their hand a little bit more before I start interacting with it. The downside of that is they could have interaction for our hand disruption in the form of like sensor or quench. Um, but luckily we can play around that here. Um, we're just gonna attack first before doing anything else, see if maybe they do something in response. It's very unlikely that they would, but um, gonna lead with duress as it's slightly uh, more narrow and they have six cards in their hand, so it's very likely to hit. Um, Thoughtseize is gonna be able to take anything. Not that they're probably playing very many creatures in their deck, but I've seen people board into Thing in the Ice. All right, their hand is not very good, but they do have another opt. We're gonna take Expansion Explosion, as that card could actually like get them back into the game, but they're not gonna miss any land drops this game, which is pretty good for them. Um, I mean, it is possible we were supposed to take the opt there. Since Expansion kind of only does something once they have Wilderness Wreck in play doesn't really do much before that. So I'm not 100% sold on on having taken expansion. It's a more powerful card by quite a bit, but uh, Opt obviously um, helps them find what they need. And at the moment, they don't have anything going on. All right, stomping ground tap past the turn, it looks like, for our opponent. We do need to find some lands here. That's not a land. Hmm. So they played stomping ground tapped and past the turn. They probably have a counter spell in hand. So I think I just cracked the clue looking for a land. Oof. That's not good. Yeah, if we just cast Thoughtseize, they get to scry off their Sinister Sabotage um, mission briefing. Okay, that's a bit different than what I thought. But they also could have cast mission briefing in response to the Thoughtseize. And it's likely their last card that we don't know about is a land. But yeah, obviously not hitting our third land drop here on the draw with the two land start is a bit frustrating. Even with a, an extra draw off the clue, there's our third land. Now we can start to apply some pressure. Yeah, we took a very long time to apply any pressure here, which is a big deal. Uh, let's start with the Thoughtseize. This probably gets countered, but we have another one. And we are, in fact, going to Thought Seize them again. I 
another opt, another expansion explosion. Well, yeah, I gotta take the expansion explosion again. I mean, we kind of, uh, we kind of got priced into that with the fact that they have a bunch of lands now and they can actually expand an explosion and draw multiple cards starting next turn. Yeah, really unfortunate that this is turn 5 and they're still at 14. Um, but we do get to play a Thraven Inspector and a Smuggler's Copter here. Maybe should have played the Smuggler's Copter first to play around Sensor. Yeah, probably should have played the Smuggler's Copter first. I played the Thraven Inspector first, hoping that maybe they would counter it with like a Sinister Sabotage, but I think it would have made more sense to just play the Smuggler's Copter first and play around Sensor, but it's close. Uh, I'm gonna play Gideon, Ally of Zendikar here. Oops. Make a creature that crews the Copter. get in there for five and then we should have lethal next turn by quite a bit so that was pretty fast turnaround into our aggress aggression um heart of kieran is pretty good but ballista for two might just win the game we also have two mutavolts we're potentially activating i think dahlia is past her prime here as far as turns where we want to have her in play so i'm just going to dump the dahlia And our opponent still didn't play their Sulphur Falls, so we still know one of their two cards. So it's likely they've just bricked on lands here. Or bricked with lands. And another concession. So, yeah, 2-0 here with Orzhov Vehicles. Just kind of charging through. All right, hey, welcome to round three with Orzov Vehicles. This hand is pretty good. We're going to keep it. Um, no vehicle to speak of here, but we got two scroungers that'll get the party started, get the damage rolling, and we've got an interaction spell and a planeswalker to kind of top everything off. So things are looking pretty good. Also being, being able to play first here. Winning the die roll always really nice. Temple of Epiphany. Hmm. Potentially another um, rug wilderness reclamation deck. Not really sure. Um, more likely just a uh, like five color Golos deck with Field of the Dead. Yeah, that's, that's probably what we're up against here. Um, our life total is not going to matter that much, but I'm still going to just play the uh, scrap heap with the caves and get in there for one. Thoughtseize, all right. I like Thoughtseize a lot. That's certainly what we're going to cast. Um, suppose let's attack first. They might be playing Wild Slash. I want to give them as little information as possible before casting it. Fires of Invention, Narset, Narset, Chandra, six mana. All right. Um, there are Fires of Invention, Jeskai deck. Okay, 
Yeah, I've seen these before. Um, they have two Narsets, so it doesn't do a lot to take the Narset. So we're just going to take the Fires, which I believe would be the correct choice anyway, even if there was just one Narset. Um, but they could Narset into another Fires, obviously. And we're just going to keep the Aggression piled on here with another two mana three power creature and hopefully just end the game before they get started they found it to fairy which is strong they played the castle So yeah, we're going to play Gideon. Going to give this guy, I guess, lifelink. And we're going to kill the Narset. Even though I don't really want to. I think we should. And put them to 11. This way we... I guess don't quite have lethal next turn, but we don't anyway because they're gonna Teferi bounce something. So I, I think it's better just to get Narset off the board. Yeah, we're, oh no, we have exactly lethal next turn, um, but obviously they're gonna bounce something. Um, hmm, that's interesting then. I actually didn't do the math totally and, and having done it after saying that, um, Maybe attacking them was better because they'd be at eight here and it doesn't really matter what they find with Narset. Yeah, maybe that was a huge misplay actually. Hmm. Shouldn't end up mattering too much unless they find a Supreme Verdict and another White Source, which those would, be, those would have been really good draws for them. They did in fact draw those last draw those cards in the last three turns. Um, yeah, let's go. This guy lifelink. I'm gonna attack to fairy because it doesn't actually change much about the clock, and I don't think that one point is gonna be a game changer. If they find the Supreme Verdict, we are going to have a lot of trouble here. And if they don't, we're just going to win. So I don't think it changes things too much. Also, Gideon still gets to attack them for four next turn, even through a Supreme Verdict. Yeah, they're, they're just very dead here. Cool. All right, so another very controlling Fires of Invention deck. I mean, not the last deck we played against was not a Fires of Invention deck, but uh, it was a very controlling um, three-color build with a lot of spells. So we're going to want our anti-spell cards, <laughs> anti-non-creature uh, spells cards. Um, and Collective Brutality, D-Spark, and Duress. D-Spark is going to be able to deal with Fires of Invention itself. Also, uh, uh, four mana Chandra, five mana Sarkin, um, five mana Teferi. We do have Noxus Grasp we can bring in for three mana Teferi, which I don't hate the idea of. Let's see what we're cutting first. We're going to take out the Fatal Pushes for sure. They do kill um, Fey of Wishes, which isn't terrible, honestly. Uh, it is kind of nice to be able to kill Fae of Wishes. We could bring in Valorous Stance, which is going to save our, one of our creatures and also be able to kill a Fae of Wishes. I think I'm going to do that, actually. Just leave one out to a Fae of Wishes. Um, when they like go to discard and bring it back to their hand, they probably wouldn't expect us to have a removal spell for it post-board. So that could be useful. Um, and what else are we cutting here? I don't really think we need three Thalia. Obviously a powerful card, but more powerful on the play than on the draw. And we could trim on heart. 
Eh, that all looks pretty good. I think I'm just going to run it like this. No Noxious Grasp. Noxious Grasp does kill Teferi, but I'm not sure how many white Planeswalkers they're playing. It might just be the four little Teferis. And otherwise, they're all they're all green and blue, or um, not green, but uh, red and blue planeswalkers. So, because of that, I'm just going to leave the noxious grasp in the sideboard. But if we see more white ones, uh, especially if we see some green ones, <laughs> which uh, I'd be very surprised by, I, I'm pretty sure they're a Jeskai Fires deck. Um, this hand is pretty good. We're going to need to draw a third land and then a fourth land coming up, but it's uh, very good otherwise. Also really wouldn't mind a toolcraft exemplar before the, uh, the lands to get the, get things going. Scrap heap's pretty good. All right, let's just lead with the Thoughtseize since we're going to be tapping out for the next bit of time. The next few turns, they've got a Supreme Verdict, some lands that do cast Supreme Verdict, and a Definite Clarion. All right, and Drawn from Dreams, which they can't cast currently. Interesting. Um, I don't really care about Supreme Verdict or Definite Clarion too much since we have Gideon and the two... Um, vehicles. So I think I'm just going to take Drawn from Dreams even though they can't cast it. Because it's the most powerful card. It's kind of surprising. I guess it's better than Dig when you're playing Fires. Because Fires doesn't cast eight mana, 9 mana spells. I guess fires is just four and five mana, or like I don't I don't remember exactly how fires reads. I suppose. Nice, we found the third land. Um, just gonna lead with Heart of Kieran. Deals the most damage, and it gets crewed for free by Gideon. Um, next turn we're going to crew it with Thalia. They're probably going to wipe the board to kill the Thalia, but that's fine. This deck actually plays pretty well against sweepers. If you haven't been able to tell yet, um, yeah, we just play a lot of planeswalkers and vehicles that don't care too much about sweepers. All right, well, Toolcraft does care about sweepers. Um, we're just going to lead with Dahlia and see if... they want to definite clarion the, the one Dahlia, which would be fine. They are, in fact, going to do that. So we know about the Supreme Verdict. They have three unknown cards in hand. Double Toolcraft. All right, that's not ideal. But I suppose we can play Smuggler's Copter and then one Toolcraft Exemplar and still get it in there for four because Toolcraft plays pretty well with Heart of Kieran, it turns out. So this is something cool I wanted to showcase during this video, and I'm glad we're getting to do that. Uh, if you didn't play with Toolcraft Exemplar in Standard, it's it's pretty powerful. It's great with an artifact in play, and obviously it, it's great in, com in combination with Heart of Kirin because it's Crew 3, and for one mana we get a Crew 3 the turn the Toolcraft comes into play with uh, the, the trigger on Toolcraft becoming a 3-2 during the beginning of combat which is pretty great. Fires of Invention, that's a really good one. We're in for it now. All right, so that's their whole turn. So Fires of Invention reads, converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of lands you control. That's why they don't play Dig Through Time. That's what it is. It's the number of lands they control.
cool. So now a land off the top would be fantastic. That's not a land, but it's pretty good still. Um, we don't know that they don't have another sweeper, but if we play Toolcraft, we can also play Scrap Heap Scrounger, crew both of these, attack for seven, and then they kind of need another sweeper. And if they have one, we just play a Gideon, either one, and, and do pretty well here. So yeah, let's just play both creatures. Let's crew the heart with this guy. And just so we don't have to do the begin combat thing, we'll just crew the copter with this one right now. Just to make sure we don't misclick. And we did find the land. So Gideon Black Blade's good, but I think Gideon Ally is going to be better, so I'm just going to drop the Black Blade here. And we're just going to play the land. Yeah, Ally gets to crew both, where Gideon just crews one of them. In case they wipe the board here. And both is going to equal them dead. Whereas uh, just one does not kill them from five life. They also might gain some life off this interplanar beacon. Yeah, they did find a supreme verdict. Cool, that's all right. And they can't cast spells on not their turn, right? Well, all right, that's great. Looks like that's game over then. Yeah, that's just game over. So we crew both, yeah. And they just scoop. So yeah, we fought through two Supreme Verdicts and a, and a Deafening Clarion. This deck doesn't really fold two sweepers. It's pretty good against them. Uh, yeah, we are XO right now. Going into round four. I'm dropping down towards the bottom of the uh, first page of the trophies. Um, with one win, though, we go up into seventh place. And with two wins, go straight up into, uh, or two trophies, that is. Uh, two more wins here would give us another trophy, put me in uh, seventh place. And then one more trophy after that would put me in uh, fourth place. But very far behind the top three, which have been the top three for the past couple of weeks now. They're just head and shoulders above the rest. Hey, hey, and welcome to round four here with Orzhov Vehicles. Um, we are 3-0 and right now. We beat Fires, um, Rug, Wilderness Reclamation, it seemed like, and uh, Black Green Hardened Scales with the, uh, the Mana Dorks and the Once Upon a Times, which I think is the correct build of Hardened Scales. But we're going to mulligan this hand, and... Oof. This one's tempting as if we find the second land, we get to just beat down with multiple toolcraft exemplars and multiple scrap heap scroungers. But if we do not find the second land on turn two, we're in some trouble. I'm going to actually keep this. Um, I think a five card hand is going to be quite a bit worse. And if we spike a land, we're probably going to have a, an easy win, um, but this is certainly a risky keep. I may regret this very much. We're going to bottom Thalia. Going to lead with Toolcraft. Um, a white source here, and we get to play Thraven Inspector and another Toolcraft, and then just follow it up with Scrap Heap after Scrap Heap, which is just tons of damage over the course of the next three turns. Um, but yeah, if we miss on the land, we're still casting things for the next three turns, even without hitting our land drops, but it's certainly quite a bit worse. All right, we whiffed. Um, I think here I'm just gonna play Thraven Inspector and get in for three.
But yeah, I mean, we were kind of likely to whiff. I didn't really want to go to five um, with a hand that was so good with one one land draw. So I didn't, but uh, certainly would be defensible to go to five. I think going to five is fine with the London Mulligan. It's obviously not great. Did our opponent keep a one lander as well? Are they just attacking? No, they have two lands. And they have a scrap heap. These things can't block, though. So if we do find a land here, come on, deck. Oh. <laughs> all right. That's not good at all. So we can attack for four, play another three power creature. And just try and race and, like, never cast these Thought Seizes. I think casting Thought Seizes might be really bad for us considering they're attacking for five next turn and we're having to pay life every turn for our Caves of Coilos. So I think we'll die too fast. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's pretty dire straits here having missed our land both on both of our draw steps. Going to 10. We're attacking for 7 as it stands here, which is pretty good. If they don't have a removal spell. Oh, they have a 2-3 now. Yeah, that's bad for us. Woof. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, three draw steps in, still no land. It was a risky keep, and obviously we were punished. But going to five just didn't feel great on the play. And yeah, if I could if I could do it over again, I would uh, I would change it because I like to play actual games of Magic rather than one person gets stuck on one land type of games. But um, I kind of agree with it in the abstract. Obviously, knowing that we weren't going to hit a land, I would switch. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm still like I probably still keep that again, um, and maybe I'd be wrong both times. But we're just going to go to uh, to game two. I, I don't really want to show them that we're playing Thoughtsees, although they they're probably aware of that. Um, potentially, we're going to board out some amount of Thoughtsees as well. All right, so here we're going to want Legion's End, which is going to exile a lot of their small creatures. We're going to want Collective Brutality, as we can kill their smaller creatures and potentially get a card out of their hand if we want to go that route. Um, Cast Down is going to kill most of their stuff, including their Smuggler's Copters, which is pretty important. Um, Valorous Stance kills Kalidus, but that's probably it, huh? It could save up one of our creatures. Um, D Spark also deals with Kalidas. Um, we could bring in Rest in Peace and cut our scrap heaps, which might be important here. Yeah, I think I like D Spark more than Valorous Stance because at least it hits Rankle and Kalidas. And Duress is okay. I, I guess the Thought Seizes aren't so good since they're kind of a. An aggressive strategy that the two life is actually going to be a, a pretty big deal against um ballista is fine it, it like can get their night market lookouts and stuff which is kind of a big deal i like tool craft tool craft exemplar here too um even though it doesn't block very well it does attack pretty well on the play 
Um, and I think maybe I want rest in peace and like trim a couple scroungers. Feels weird to trim the scroungers, but um, if we're bringing in rest in peace, they're certainly not as good. They don't block. Even though when we're on the play, I think the aggression is pretty important. I'm gonna try this with one rip and trimming on scroungers when we're on the play. And then maybe on the draw, we'll do something different, maybe cut the exemplars if we end up winning this game. Hmm, another one with the one land. It's a good hand. <laughs> um, and we can cast four of our six cards with the one land, but I'm not going to do it again with the one landers. All right, yeah, this is much better. We're going to keep this and bottom. I guess it caves. We certainly don't want to pay too much life. We don't have any double black spells. We're mostly a white deck. No artifact here to go with our toolcraft exemplar, so that's certainly a bit worse. I mean, we did trim some of them as well. But quite a few in our deck that we might find. Uh, we have D-Spark to deal with Kalidus, but D-Spark, you know, might end up not doing anything. But Collective Brutality is going to be very good this turn. And I do think I want to discard the planes to look at their hand. And we found a Fatal Push. Nice. Um, they do have a Kalidus as well, which is great. So we have a target for D-Spark coming up. And we're just going to need to draw some other answer for Smuggler's Copter. But as it stands, we're in decent shape here. Get in there, little exemplar friend. Swamp Copter, Cast Down deals with the Copter really well. That was a good draw. All right, so we, we can deal with what they're doing at the moment. We just need to start presenting our own threats um, besides Mutavault and Exemplar, or at least get the Exemplar into a reasonable size. But yeah, we're casting that thing down right now. Gideon is definitely a way to turn this game around. Um, I'm going to hold up the D spark since they're very likely just to play Kalidus this turn. Um, I mean, they do have Murderous Rider for Gideon, but at least we get a 2 2 out of the deal. And yeah, I do want to despark on their turn so that I can untap and play Gideon if we draw the land. So this was the reason for the despark. Was exactly Kalidus and Rankle. Having to pay life every turn for the caves has been difficult. Um, they are kind of an aggressive deck. Um, all right, Smuggler's Copter is fine. At least we can attack for three now. I don't think I'm worried about them attacking us for two. I think we want to be more aggressive here. 
And this also might bait them into using Murderous Rider on the Smuggler's Copter, which is also good for us. Because then our Gideon gets to hang out and be free, do his thing. Knight. All right, Fatal Push is good here. So, yeah, what I want to do here is fire up the Muta Vault. Curing the Copter. And then we're going to attack with both. Hmm. Well, that kind of sucks because <laughs> we do want that land pretty bad, but we're going to discard the Muta Vault. And they are going to block there. And I want them to use their mana right now on pumping the knight. Yeah. So always be the second one to act. We could have got more damage in here had we killed the knight first. But then they would have had Murderous Rider up and been able to kill our Smuggler's Copter. So I like that we waited. Um, we're still getting three damage in. And we still have Gideon in hand. Um, and they didn't get to continue to play to the board. They they instead tried to activate an ability on a creature that was going to die. So it wasn't quite a two for one or anything, but it definitely used up a lot of their mana, a lot of their tempo. Very tempo positive play for us. We found the land. Um, yeah, we're just going to play Gideon. Make a dude. Had to go to eight to do that, though. All right, maybe I should have thought about this a little more. Maybe hoped to... Yeah. Bloodsoak Champion is just a pretty good card. <laughs> the fact that you tag with it and then just bring it back. If you have um, creatures that are X2 or, or smaller, it becomes kind of a problem on defense. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't really have to attack with Smuggler's Copter here. Maybe they'll go for the toolcraft with the murderous rider. Didn't have to give them this information. We could have just attacked with toolcraft and then passed the turn. Um, but yeah, I like that we're not attacking the smuggler's copter because now we can block blood soaked pretty well. And they're going to kill Gideon. Yeah, that makes sense. They have to go to six to do that, though. And they have two creatures that don't block, and then the Murderous Rider, which they're likely to cast here. And we are going to loot because we have more cards that we don't want than cards that we do. That's one we really do want, <laughs> um, so that's unfortunate. <laughs> so yeah that didn't pay off for us but generally you want to loot um, we do have scrap heap scrounger in our deck as well so it's another good reason to be looting
So we're at six. They're probably going to trade with Toolcraft here. And go up to eight. All right, that drop plays. Really close game here. Um, they get to draw an extra card with Castle Lockdwain if they break. If they hit Rankle, we just die. They've got another Bloodsoak Champion. That's okay. They're going to activate, go to four, which puts them dead to the heart of Kieran. And they're just going to scoop. All right. Got them. Get a game three here against Mono Black Aggro. Um, yeah, the Bloodsoak Champions are definitely a problem, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the rest in peace decision. Um, yeah, that was a close game. We were pretty far ahead for a while there, but we did mulligan and then uh, just had removal that lined up pretty well with what they were doing. Those, uh, those blood soaked champions, though, pretty good. So, yeah, Thalia is going to be important. Smuggler's Copter is going to be important. Um, Toolcraft was good. I think maybe I'll just leave them in. They don't block well, obviously. Could be like Duress is better. And we're just trying to be the control. Yeah, maybe we're just the control deck. On the draw. We just don't have enough. Like, I guess we could bring in Duress and some amount of Thoughtsies. Maybe Valorous Stance. Nah, I don't really like Valorous Stance. It's just killing Kalidas, which we already have a D Spark for. They don't have that many Kalidas. Um, yeah, maybe some amount of Thoughtseize instead of Exemplar. Thoughtseize losing two life, though, is pretty bad for us. Especially on the draw. Might not be worth it. Yeah, and Toolcraft crews heart pretty well. Let's just run it back. Not sure about it, but I don't really like the idea of Thoughtseize here. All right, this one's risky. But if we find a black source, Legion's End might be really good. And Heart of Kirin into Gideon is obviously really good. So we're gonna keep. We need a black source. Need a black source or another white source to really get going. And the second heart is obviously kind of a mold of six anyway. That's a very good target for Legion's End. Alright, we really need a black source, but if we don't find one, we might just crack a clue looking for one. Instead of playing heart. Depends on what else we find next turn. No blocks. Copter. Didn't get there. Um, yeah, I think we just have to crack the clue. This is going to be a big hit next turn, though. Yeah, we might just be blocking Blood Soaked. Eesh. Yeah, we really need a black source though, so I'm, I'm just gonna crack the clue.
and potentially block blood soak champion i really don't want to but we'll see what they do pre-combat Yeah, I think we just need to stem the bleeding a bit and probably block. Found the black source. Wow, so if we had the Black Source on turn two, we would have gotten a Blood Soak Champion, it looks like. Um, so what are we doing next turn? We're probably just holding up Cast Down for Smuggler's Copter, which is pretty bad, because we're taking another three. And then hoping they put, like, two Blood Soak Champions into play. Ooh, or that guy. Wow. Sick. That's a really good hand for them. Um, all right, so we drew Fatal Push. So that way, that way we can play Heart and also hold up Fatal Push here. Let's do that. So we can push the Copter. And then hopefully they play another copy of one of these cards. And we can Legion Zend a bunch of things. Otherwise, we're, we're pretty far behind here. Crew copter, kill copter. It's good that they didn't attack with the knight. We should have waited till before combat there, but I guess they could have still responded by activating the Muta Vault. So it didn't really matter. Um, that is to, to still be able to trigger their knight. Let's see. Hopefully they bring back both, both blood soaks here. I'd be fine with that. Another copter. And one blood soaked. Okay. All right. So... I believe we're going to play Gideon. And then just eat their copter if they try to attack with it, but eat whatever. Regardless. And this turn we get to um, crew the heart and give it lifelink. So this is why Gideon Blackblade is so good in this deck, because you can do this. So we got to crew the heart with the Gideon itself, because it is a creature on our turn. And then we can also crew it with loyalty counters um, on their turn. Which, yeah, is really powerful. Missing our land drop there, not ideal, but... Um, yeah, if we draw a Black Source next turn, like an untapped Black Source we get to cast both legions and, and cast down and then i'm actually feeling kind of good ooh thoughtsies so we're going to lose legions and probably yeah they took the legions end Makes sense. Um, yeah, it's our most powerful weapon in our hand right now. But they are at 14. <laughs> Not that their life total is going to matter too much for the next few turns. We are definitely on the back foot here by a, a very large margin.
No cards in hand. Because I just want to bring back two things. Everybody's coming at Gideon. So we're certainly going to activate Heart. And then they're probably going to pump Knight so that they can kill the Gideon. So I think we just block the Scrounger. Yeah, it's got to be block Scrounger here. Scrounger is also the best one to kill because the Blood Soaks come back without having to exile anything else. That's a good draw. Um, so I believe we want to cast down the smuggler's copter and maybe just attack for four here. But that means we're gonna take at least three. Maybe more. Yeah, I mean, we're playing uh, Toolcraft Exemplar for sure. And yeah, this is kind of close whether or not we want to attack or not. I, I think we do. Because, I mean, otherwise we'd be playing Smuggler's Copter. I think it's better to cast down theirs. Yeah, we're going to attack. All right. Let's get in there, Heart. They know our entire hand, which makes this makes this pretty interesting. They have no cards. They know our whole hand, but we do have some interaction. We're pretty far behind still, but we're still at 16 because of that big lifelink hit and the fact that they had to send everybody at Gideon last turn. So not in the worst spot, just not in a good spot either. If we could ever find a fourth land, things would be looking a little bit better for us too. Um, another Gideon Blackblade would be maybe the best possible, or or another Legion's End now. Yeah, I feel like we definitely want another Legion's End at this point. Okay, the Copter. I'm gonna go to before combat first, or begin combat, and then kill the Copter. Not that the copter is that good in the face of the Heart of Kieran, we just can't crew the Heart of Kieran on their turn currently. So obviously it is pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'd rather kill Smuggler's Copter than a Knight right now, because if we kill the Knight, then they get back Scrap Heap for free, basically. Whereas Smuggler's Copter cannot be exiled by Scrap Heap to come back into play. And they don't want to exile their blood soaked champion to scrap heap generally. Let's see if they pump. I think they will pump. Yeah. So we're going to take six here down to 10. They're going to get two two threes. We need like another Legion's End. It would be ideal here. That would be best possible for us for sure. Isolated Chapel plays. Um, this way we can get a walkie bee into play and make some blocks and like kill blood soaks and stuff. Um, another option we have is like walkie bee for one and play a smuggler's copter. I think I like that better. And we're just we're just gonna attack again. Yeah, I like walkie bee for one. Smuggler's Copter. Block one of the knights. Hmm. I mean, Mutaval also can attack here, putting them to four. So let's see. If we put them to four... 
with the Mutaval and the Heart of Kieran attacking right now and play Walkie B for one. Is it possible that we die? That's two, four, six, more than ten. Um, but they can't do that, yeah. I think that's best. Yeah, I think that's the move. All right, so Walkie B for one. And I don't think they can kill me. They need to draw something for the Heart of Kieran next turn. Hmm. Yeah, they especially can't kill me because Walking Ballista can also kill Blood Soaked. So they need to find a removal spell for Heart. Or, like, I guess a Rankle can block Heart. They activate both Muta Vaults. We block a Knight, shoot the Blood Soaked. They can activate one Muta Vault and then still pump a Knight. So it'd be five, six, seven would get in. But we'd be able to block that and shoot that. So I don't think they can kill us here. But something like a Smuggler's Copter or a Rankle can block our Heart of Kieran next turn. And like a fatal push for Heart of Kieran, obviously, is very good for them here. Or Murderous Rider might do it, depending on how many creatures they leave back. But we have a lot of damage coming in either way. They're gonna activate both Muta Vaults. That means they could have Fatal Push. Oh, they're just swinging out. I think this is it. I think we got it. All right, we're going to block here. And we're going to shoot here. And they can only deal six. You have a Fatal Push? They might have the Fatal Push. Be really good, obviously, if they have the Fatal Push. Um, Talia doesn't change the math here. Yeah, Talia doesn't change the math at all. And we're at four, so they just fire those both up. So yeah, we can't not so we, we can't survive if they do have the push. Um, so I'm just going to play Thalia and fire up the heart. Tag with both because it doesn't matter. Do you have the push? Wow, they drew the they drew the push. Oh wow! <laughs> All right, well they had it. Sick. That's sick. Wow, what a game. What a match. Whew, that was a close one. But they did top deck the push that turn. Um, it wouldn't have done it if it was a murderous rider. And they would have still been in bad position if it was Rankle, I think, and Smuggler's Copter. So they top decked the perfect card there 
to uh, to win that match. Really, really close. All right, hello and welcome to round five with Orzov Vehicles. Um, we lost kind of a heartbreaker there to Mono Black Aggro in game three with our opponent's very timely top decked Fatal Push. Um, it was a really sweet match, though. I'm a little disappointed that uh, we didn't actually have a good game one because we kept a one lander and didn't get there uh, on six rather than going to five. Obviously, it didn't work out. Maybe should have mulled that hand as well. Um, but we're going to keep this one. It's more controlling than our typical hands, but let's let's go with it. Going to play Concealed Courtyard untapped because there are a lot of elf decks in the format and otherwise decks that play one drops. And uh, I'd like to... Fatal push it. Well, I don't really want to fatal push gutter bones, but I want to use my mana and just keep them off the board. But it looks like we're playing against mono black aggro again. Certainly want to fatal push their smuggler's copter. So we're going to go ahead and crew ours with scrap heap and hold up fatal push. Discard a redundant Thalia here. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about our start so far. Nothing from our opponent. Okay, that's great. Let's play the Thalia. Crew the copter. This way, all their creatures are coming in tapped, which is a pretty big deal. All their non basic lands. They play 15 swamps, but they do play some non basics. Um, so it's kind of good. It looks like, oh, they're going to fire up Mutavault. Oh, that is totally fine with me. So the way they messed up there <laughs> was they fired up Mutavault pre-combat, like in our main phase, so we were able to just play our land untapped to play around them firing up Smuggler's Captor. We could also kill their Mutavault, um, which would set them behind here since they missed a land drop, but I think I'm just going to kill their Smuggler's Captor instead because it's more of an issue. And I don't care too much if they have two lands. Um, I'd rather have the heart than that planes. And yeah, we're in very good position here. Obviously, helped that our opponent missed their third land drop, and it looks like they're missing their fourth land drop as well. And we have lethal here, so we're just going to attack for lethal. If given the opportunity, they do have a fatal push for our guy, that's fine. Um, in that case, I think we're just going to cast heart rather than uh, attack with Mutavault. And just get in for six.
again, the fatal push was something they could have done in combat there, uh, which I guess that would have been fine because we still could have just passed combat without using our Muta Vault. Since that Muta Vault had been in play for at least one turn, it didn't have summoning sickness, it was still able to tap for mana. They found another land. They did not scoop. Here comes Blackblade to shut them out of the game. And they agree. And they accept defeat. All right, so another mono black aggro deck. Um, this time we had a better draw in game one. We didn't have to keep a one lander. We certainly didn't have to keep the one lander last time. <laughs> um, but we did. So Collective Brutality, Legion's End, Cast Down, all coming in for sure. And then we brought in Rest in Peace. And we took out the Thought Seizes and a couple Scrap Heats. Oh yeah, we also brought in a D-Spark for Kalidus. Um, yeah, I really don't like Scrap Heap on the draw anyway. So this makes sense. I could even see taking out another scrap heap and bringing in a Valorous Stance for the other Kalidus. But then if we end up drawing like both D Spark and Valorous Stance and they don't draw a Kalidus, those are just awful, awful cards to have in our hand. So that's a huge downside to playing those. But we do have four Smuggler's Copters. We could potentially um, discard it. And Valorous Stance has other applications, um, saving saving a creature from a, a murderous rider or a uh, noxious grasp or a fatal push of theirs. So let's try it. Let's try just cutting all the scrap heaps. I mean, obviously they're much worse with rest in peace anyway, but they do crew our vehicles really well. So there's that. Um, this hand's fine. It's a bit slow, but it has no removal. Hmm. Yeah, this hand, it's fine. Like, we can play a heart and then start crewing it with Dahlia, but we're on the draw, so we could be too far behind by the time we get going. Um, this hand on the play is certainly fine. On the draw, though, I'm worried that with no removal, we just get run over. I'm going to mulligan looking for some removal. Certainly not finding any. We're going to five cards. All right. Well, removal was not something that wanted to show up. But we're going to keep this five card hand. And we're going to bottom. Urborg helps them a lot. So we're going to bottom Urborg and Caves. Pretty unfortunate. Mold of five, though. Obviously, maybe that seven was a little bit better at this point. Just had more cards in it. <laughs> but we're going to play to the board at least with this five on turn one. And hopefully that ends up working out well for us. Land draw there is certainly not terrible. But our opponent being so far ahead on cards could be a big issue here. That's that's a removal spell. We found one. Um, all right. Let's get in there for three. That was a big draw step for us there. The fatal push is uh, pretty perfect in that spot. Out of the Evan Legion, Scrap Heap Scrounger. Yeah, 
And they're gonna agree with that one. Makes sense. We're gonna pop the copter. As it's their scariest threat here. And we drew our own copter. Toolcraft really doesn't block. I mean, it does technically block, but not very well. So we're just going to attack with that. And do I or do I not want to play this Godless Shrine? I think we do. We do have quite a few three drop spells we'd want to cast and we also probably want to crack the clue and look for a fatal push now. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. They found Kalidas. So certainly happy that we have the three lands in play. Um, we have to dig for Valorous Dance, D-Spark, and Fatal Push at this point. Um, they're attacking with... Knight? That is a very strange attack. I'm really confused about that attack with the knight, but I'm very happy that our opponent decided to do that. Um, so yeah, we are going to draw a card. Didn't want that Gideon anyway. We need a removal spell for Kalidas. Um, I tend to always loot, um, because when you loot, you just get that much closer to the stuff that you do want. Uh, yes, sometimes you'll you'll mill the one card that you need or the one of the three cards that you need or six cards that you need or whatever but you have way more cards that don't do what you want and way fewer cards that do so it's generally correct to loot because it just betters your odds for the next one um so i think we want to crack the clue first And then attack with Copter. So the really risky line we could take here is attack with Toolcraft and Copter, and then just hope to hit the Valor Stance, but that's just crazy. We're not doing that. If we had to, we would. Like if there was a situation where that was the only way we win the game, but this is not that situation. And we drew another mute of all. All right. Bummer. They only have one card in hand, so we're not in the worst spot. Hopefully that one card isn't very good, and the card they drew is also not very good. Rankle. Oof. Damn. Yeah, that's not good. Ow. Yeah, we needed them to have a bad card, not a wrinkle. Oh, they're just going full Monty. Yeah, and as well with Kalidas. Yeah, I didn't think about the Kalidas also uh, making a zombie there. So we need to still find an answer to the rank or to the Kalidas before anything else. I'm just gonna attack with the smuggler's copter first. And we did not find it. Hmm. 
Now we have one more chance to find it. With this clue. Nope. All right, I guess we're not technically dead though. But yeah, we can't win from here. Not actually dead, but we have to give them two zombies this turn. Yeah, we're we're just gonna go to game three. That was a uh, that was a rough a rough one, but. We were on a mold of five that game, so all told, not that bad. If they just didn't have a good card in hand or didn't have a good turn, the turn they played Rankle, we were actually in pretty good shape. Um, so on the play for game three, we really need outs to Kalidus. Um, Fatal Push counts, and then D-Spark and Valorous Stance. D-Spark also kills Rankle. So I think I like all the removal, and we'll just play the one rest in peace and no scrap heap still. Uh, I like the aggression that Toolcraft gives us on the play. I like Ballista in this matchup. I like all the Planeswalkers, and Thalia is pretty good too. I love the hearts. So yeah, I think this is the correct way to go about it. Let's just try it again. And we're going to keep this. We've got interaction. We've got land drops. We've got ways to um, loot away our land drops. If we don't need extra ones. Um, yeah, Thoughtseize is going to take our copter, which is rough. But we get to draw a card off this clue, which we're probably going to do regardless of what they do. It's unlikely they play something that... Legion's End. Okay, that's totally fine. Really don't mind them casting Legion's End on a Thraven Inspector. That tells me that they probably have another one in hand, though. Alright, we kind of bricked there. Hopefully we don't brick again. Oof. The bricks are real. Um, very unlikely that they don't play anything we want to kill next turn, so... I think I'm just going to play Godless Shrine tapped rather than Mutaval, even though maybe Mutaval is slightly higher upside in that we can attack for two. Um, but yeah, we're we're a bit flooded here. Hmm. Double thoughts. He's not helping the flood. Wow. Oh no! Not like this, friends. Not like this. Looks like our opponent's hand is all reactive as well. Might as well have them cast a fatal push here on a muta vault. There she goes. But yeah, that seventh land, or I guess eighth land, is certainly not ideal for us here. We're going to need something real good in, in succession, like each turn. I mean, they knew this was coming. But I guess they figured might as well just have them use their fatal push, just like we did. 
Oh, wow. Huh. Well, in the first 13 cards of our deck, four cards were non land cards, <laughs> three of which were in our opener, and one of which was the next card, and then for the next five turns, plus an extra draw. We drew lands. Um, so that's a bummer. That's a, it's a hard pill to swallow, really. But this is magic. It's a game of variance. And that's how it goes. Sometimes you just are not allowed to play real games. And it's too bad. But the times where you do get to play the real games, it's the best game ever. So we keep coming back to it. But yeah, certainly these ones are not not good. Not good in the uh, trying to play to Magic's favor kind of space. Wow. <laughs> All right, that's 10. That's 10 lands, four spells in the top 14 cards. We're playing 22 lands or 23 lands in a 60 card deck. So you do the math there. It's it's pretty unlikely. Um yeah, I guess we'll play it out for another turn or two here. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> 10 lands in the top 14 cards. Maybe we have a Settle the Wreckage, though. Settle the Wreckage is a card we could consider in the sideboard, actually, in this deck. It's certainly playable and pretty good against Mono Black, and I would say pretty good against... Uh, green stompy decks as well, which are the decks that I've been struggling against with this deck. So yeah, maybe potentially one of the Valorous Stance, or the, yeah, probably the Valorous Stance becomes a Settler Wreckage. Kind of like the idea of that. Holy damn. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah. 11 of the top 15 cards of our deck. We're Lance. All right. Our opponent flooded a bit as well, but with Castle Lockthwain, they are not in danger of flooding too bad. I wonder if we can maybe fit a Castle Lockthwain in this deck. The card's pretty good. Certainly, potentially, we could fit a Castle Ardenvale. Well, Collective Brutality is our first non land card since turn one, or I mean, since turn two, when we drew the cast down. We might as well use two modes on it. <laughs> Certainly don't want them to have their Muta Vaults tap for black. So let's just discard that Urborg. And they got a Knight in hand. <laughs> I'm going to play all these lands. Um, yeah. I don't think there's any card that gets us out of this. Yeah, I mean, if we actually did have Settle the Wreckage in our deck. So, yeah, this is a good it's a good moment to, uh, to contemplate maybe putting Settle the Wreckage in the 75 um, because it does catch you up from spots where you're very far behind and... Uh, against Mono Black, you could easily be in this spot, especially on the draw, where you need something like a Settle the Wreckage 
to get you back in. Um, so yeah, I think I, I probably will put a settle the wreckage in the 75 going forward, but we're going to go ahead and scoop this one. And yeah, we ended up going 3-2 after starting 3-0. and um, Kind of rough. Two mono-black close matches, but two non-games in those matches. Um, all right, so let's check out the deck. This is what we were running with today. So hello and welcome to the Deck Tech. Uh, this is Orzov Vehicles. This is the uh, deck of the day here. Um, I got this list from a player by the name of QB Turtle, who happens to be the trophy leader at this very moment. I'm not sure if QB Turtle was playing this deck a lot during their trophy runs, but they certainly got at least one trophy with it. And I changed some cards um, in the sideboard to kind of play for the current meta rather than the meta maybe a week or week and a half ago when uh, QB Turtle first got the trophy with Orzhov Vehicles. Um, but the general idea of the deck is we've got one mana interaction spells in Fatal Push and Thought Seize, and we've got cheap but powerful creatures in the form of Toolcraft Exemplar and Thraben Inspector, both of which crew our vehicles very well. So uh, a Thraben Inspector has a hard time crewing heart, but Toolcraft does it just by itself. You go to combat, it gets plus two plus one. Before the end of your begin combat step, you activate Heart of Kirin, crewing it with Toolcraft Exemplar, and you can just, for one mana, crew your heart, which is great. Also, Scrap Heap Scrounger, if you played standard during Heart of Kirin, Scrap Heap Scrounger, you know that these two cards are quite good together. Um, and then the newest addition is Gideon Blackblade. Now, this card does a lot when you're playing a vehicles deck. Um, if you think about this card with Heart of Kirin, uh, turn two Heart of Kirin, turn three Gideon Blackblade. Tap Gideon Blackblade, which is a 4 4 creature on your turn to crew the heart. Give Heart Lifelink, or Indestructible if you want, but usually you're going to give it Lifelink. And then attack them for 4 Lifelink in the air, Vigilant. On their turn, take a counter off this Gideon that just got a free counter giving your Heart Lifelink, and activate the Heart again to block. So yeah, Heart plays really well with Planeswalkers, as we all know, uh, especially Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Gideon Ally of Zendikar, also really cool at... Um, crewing copter with his allies and then also attacking for five himself um and sometimes pumping up the team so that even our knight allies can crew heart of Kirin, pumping up the team so that uh toolcraft exemplar can push through x4s stuff like that um Udavalt can crew Kirin with the minus uh just a really powerful planeswalker i'm sure y'all have seen gideon ally of zendikar and plenty of uh Standard decks of old, and, and certainly a lot of Pioneer decks playing it right now. Thalia Heretic Cathar is going to be kind of a disruptive creature that has good stats and crews Heart of Kirin. Uh, Thalia Heretic Cathar can really set someone behind when we're on the play. Um, so we're playing three of those, um, and she's been pretty good. The two toughness is certainly a liability. She should probably come out against the decks playing Shock. But if they're not playing Shock, she is very, very good. Um, but yeah, against red decks, you're probably boarding her out. And then we've got one Walking Ballista. It triggers our Toolcraft Exemplar. It crews Smuggler's Copter. It happens to deal extra damage on its own. It's a good blocker, block shoot. Um, gives you some game against some decks that are, are difficult to beat without having some sort of tricky card like Walking Ballista. Also, Walking Ballista is just a really powerful card in its own right. Sometimes you can take over a game just with a, a singular walkie B if your opponent bricks for a couple turns and you just put some counters on it and just win, um, even if you're bricking. So walking ballista is just a powerful card, and that's why we're playing one. But I could see that coming out at some point and becoming maybe maybe a third Black Blade, maybe a fourth Ally of Zendikar. I've been really impressed with Black Blade, so I, I wouldn't mind actually playing a third Black Blade over the uh, walking ballista going forward. But in our sideboard here, we've got one rest in peace. It seems like the graveyard decks have kind of taken a backseat to the green decks and the mono black aggro decks these days. So the graveyard decks aren't as scary. I'm not. I'm not expecting to run into that many graveyard decks currently. So just one rest in peace. You still want it when you want it, 
but we were also playing Scrap Heap Scrounger. So it's a little disynergistic for us as well. Um, three Noxious Grasp. There's tons of green decks going around. These also kill Teferi Planeswalkers. These also kill uh, Tamiyo Planeswalkers out of the Nexus deck. So Noxious Grasp does a lot. It's good in a lot of matchups, and it's very good against the green decks, obviously. Um, so yeah, three of those. Uh, I expect to play against green like every other round these days. I think... Elvish Mystic, Llanowar Elves, and Once Upon a Time are three of like the best cards in the format, and any deck playing that that package of one drops and Once Upon a Time free spells um, is probably tier one in this current metagame. So we're, we're looking to target them a bit with the three Noxious Grasp. The two Legions end are very good against those Elf decks. You're going to exile their Elf and whatever else they got in their hand, or if they play two of the same Elf, obviously get both of them. Legion's End also good in the mirror match, great against mono black aggro. So just a very good sideboard card at the moment. Then we've got D Spark, which can kill a Wilderness Reclamation, uh, Kalidas, Rankle, um, Vivian, Arcbo Ranger, Nissa, who shakes the world. A lot of a lot of good targets for this out of the green and black decks, and also out of the uh, the Planeswalker decks, the Fires of Invention decks. Um, those type of things that where you just kind of want to catch all, like deal with a permanent that costs four or more. Um, and then Valorous Stance is kind of a cute one. It's good against Supreme Verdict, which our deck is already pretty good against. It's good against Fatal Push. It's good against Kalidas. So it's it's kind of just like a, a cute um, answer to some of those things. I think this might become a Settle the Wreckage going forward as a way to catch up, where this card doesn't really catch us up and Settle the Wreckage would, and also happens to kill all those things that we would want to kill um, with this and all the other things that attack that turn. So, yeah, I think this is going to become a Settle the Wreckage going forward. One Duress to go with two Collective Brutalities, which are going to be for the uh, the spell-based matchups, the non-creature decks, and then also Collective Brutality happens to be good against creature decks as well. Um, and then three Blight Beetle. So this card is very good against the Hardened Scales decks, obviously, but also very good against Mono Green Devotion. Um, and then you can bring Blight Beetle in against any green deck as just a forever blocker that can just block a Love Struck Beast every turn. Um, block, uh, yeah, I guess mostly Love Struck Beast is the best um, card that it can block since Questing Beast and Steel Leaf Champion get through Blight Beetle pretty well. But yeah, probably bring in like one against the Love Struck Beast deck just to have a blocker for that. And then cast down just a pretty solid Doom Blade effect that doesn't quite work on Questing Beast and Galta and Rankle and Kalidas, but it kills pretty much everything else in those decks. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, as, as you can tell by the way I'm describing this, we're definitely gunning for the green decks and the mono black decks. And with this uh, this deck today, we just went 3-0 into 3-2. We lost to Mono Black Aggro twice. Uh, very close matches. Uh, easily could have went the other way. And yeah, it was a really fun deck to mess around with. Um, going forward, yeah, maybe a, maybe a Settle the Wreckage instead of a Valorous Stance to give us a little more game against the creature decks that we're having trouble with. Um, but in general, the deck feels really strong and... I hope you have a good time messing around with it like I have. And be sure to let me know on Twitter or or come check me out on Twitch when I'm live, 12 to 6 on uh, most weekdays. And on Twitter, KPonsMTG. And also on Twitch, KPonsMTG. Make sure you uh, stop by and let me know how you're doing with the deck. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. And also, I want to hear what you've done to it, to change it, to make it better, whatever, uh, anything like that. So, uh, yeah, again, thanks for hanging out with me today here on tcgplayer.com. If you want to pick up any of these cards, we've got them all over this website right around me. And, uh, yeah, have a great rest of your evening, and I'll talk to you soon. See you next week. Mm -hmm.